Hello my friends, I am very excited to talk to you about today about Russia. Russia is the country that situated in the opposite side where the Europe was, if you remember our map. Russia is the big country and we already talk about it a little bit when we listen to the music of Peter Tchaikovsky. Peter Tchaikovsky wrote music for Nutcracker, for Ballet Sleeping Beauty, for Ballet Sla uh, Swan Lake. So I'm sure you remember that and you're familiar with his music by now. Uh, I am um, actually grew up in that country. And because of that, I have a lot of fun stuff to show you. I can show you a musical instrument that um, typical for Russia. And I can uh, teach you a song and show you a little bit of the crafts that Russian people do. For example, I'm wearing a typical Russian scarf that a long time ago every Russian woman was wearing. It has fringes and flowers and also I have other uh, beautiful things from Russia. For example, for the Easter, for the holiday that's coming pretty soon, we have those Easter eggs. They are made from wood and they actually paint it very beautifully. Or this is the egg holder, which is also made from wood and painted in beautiful different colors. I also have a little figurines that called Gzel. And as you see, they have only two colors, white and blue. And this is the little mouse, which is the year of the red, if you remember, we talk about it when we talk about Chinese calendar. And this is the cat, because I like cats, and I actually have one at home, but not the blue cat. This is my cat, if you want to say hi to him. Coco. Yes. And this is my daughter, Xenia, who is going to help hi. us today um, to sing some Russian songs. Um, we're talking about Easter and spring, and you remember that in the Easter, in April, a lot of uh, birds are coming back from the north and the snow is melting and the flower is coming up. And in Russian tradition, they make this kind of musical instruments that's called svistulka. And they made from the clay and they make the shape of the chicken and the rooster. And to play those musical instruments, you have to um, blow in the tail. Blow the air. So Xenia and I are gonna do a duet because they play those instruments uh, and let the, the birds know to come back. And sometimes they have two people uh, uh, have them and they make like a duet. So Xenia will start. And that one is a rooster. He has a little bit higher sound as itself, right? Also, we have uh, also um, this kind of svistulka, but look, it's a whale and it's made, it's from a different town and then made from the black clay. And let's see, Xenia's gonna play it for you, what kind of sound they make. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper, kind of quieter sound, right? Like the whales in the sea. So this is Tanya's favorite instrument. Yes. So also one of the most famous Russian instrument is this one. It has triangle of shape and it's called balalaika. And balalaika only have three strings. One, two, and three. And this is not the, it's a toy balalaika, kind of. So you can't really make a sound of it, but to play it, just like a guitar, you're gonna hold it, and with one finger, you're gonna plug the string, and another will 
press the string to make a sound different. And as you see, there is a beautiful painting on that in front to decorate it. But another instrument that I want to show you, and that's actually a real instrument, you can play songs of that. It's in Russia, it's called Gusli. And it has many strings. And every string you can the string so this instrument people put on their lap and you pluck the string with one hand and another hand will stop the vibration otherwise all of those strings gonna vibrate and the song became a little bit muddy okay so um i have a song here that i wanted to uh play for you and that's a very familiar song for you um it says on top of spaghetti on that music, okay? Sorry, I'm going to start again. And you have to really flap your the string with your fingers. So now my fingers hurt a little bit because I didn't get used to play that instrument. But you can make a special, or you can get a special like a plastic plaque and plaque with that. Thank you, Xenia. Um, so, um, also I want to teach you a song which you know, everybody knows that song. It's called Frere Jacques. So Frere Jacques, you can sing in different languages, right? Because you remember, it's a French song that we sang in French. Then it's a, they have English words, but it's Martin, and I'm, um, Brother John. And I'm going to teach you the Russian words. Um, so the brother in Russia, it's called Bratitz. And we're going to call him Martin instead of John, okay? So that starts like this. Bratitz Martin, Bratitz Martin, ты всё спишь, ты всё спишь, солнышко уж стало, солнышко уж стало, ding-dong, ding, ding-dong, ding. So Bratitz Martin, Bratitz Martin, Ты всё спишь means, are you still sleeping? Солнышко, it's a sun in Russian. So, солнышко уж стало means the sun is rising. And then ding, dong, ding, it's the same thing. So, we're going to sing it now three times in three different languages, okay? First in French, then in English, and then in Russian. Ready? French. Thank <laughs> you. 
expansion words and when I see you, um, you will be able, we will be able to sing it all together. So another thing we want to show you with Ksenia is um, a game that Russian kids play when it's their birthday party, okay? So um, usually they, they bake a cake just like here and we call it karavai. Karavai, it's a big bread or big cake. And usually we put one person in the middle of the circle, whoever's uh, birthday it is, and we walk around it. But since it's only two of us, we're just gonna do it like this together, okay? So, как на сенины именины испекли мы каравай, вот такой вышины, вот такой нежины, вот такой ширины, вот такой ужины, каравай, каравай, кого любишь выбирай. And usually at that point, the person who was in the middle of the circle, they pick some new friend from the circle, they stand in the middle, and the whole song going around. So, uh, as I said, Karavai is the cake, and then they said that it was baked that tall, and that low, that wide, and that narrow. And usually when they do narrow, then they start tickling the person who's standing in the middle. So it's a very fun Russian game, and um, I will try to find it maybe on online so your parents can show it to you. Um, so that would be probably, oh, and this is Matryoshka. This is the famous Russian nesting doll. Remember? You can separate that. There's another one. Yes. And another one. And it's like a little puzzle. One. So you have to first separate them and find the top, which is belongs to the correct bottom. And sometimes the Matryoshki has many dolls inside. So this has only one, two, three, four. Five. Oh, five. And five, usually the baby. You can't open it anymore. Okay? And then you have to put this all back together. So when you open this, and then they hop in into each other's. And then you have to cover it up with the proper. And it became one. So I hope you like our presentation about Russia and I will send some links so you can listen to music of Peter Tchaikovsky or uh, some other Russian uh, uh, musicians. Oh, we forgot to play Loshki. Oh no, Senya, that's the last thing we're going to show. It's the Loshki. So this is the spoons that you can actually use to cook or eat soup. And it could be used as a musical instrument. So you put those two together like this, and you have to put your th uh, pointer finger in between. So it looks like this. So when you hold them, it has a space between them. And then you have to put, and you do the rhythm. Okay, so again, we're going to take turns. I'm going to do my rhythm and then Xenia is going to do hers, okay? Okay. Good. Thank you so much, Xenia, for your help today. And... I hope you like our playing and our music and I see you soon. Bye.